Hello, welcome to the Root Solutions demonstration for Creo Parametric Flexible Modeling Extension. Flexible modeling is an extension to Creo Parametric that allows users to make modifications to their parts working directly on the geometry. Traditional methods of editing parts involve things like features, dimensions, the part history, or the design intent. Flexible modeling adds powerful new direct capabilities that allow the user much more flexibility and capability in this editing process. So why would users require these new capabilities? I'm going to go through a few of the use case scenarios where flexible modeling would be a great help to many, many users. Large models with lots of features can sometimes be extremely cumbersome to work with. It can be very difficult to track down a particular feature, or you may have a number of features spread out through that history of the design that relate to a particular area of your product. Getting to each one of these features could be extremely tricky and sometimes cause downstream problems with other features. Imported geometry has no history at all. So all of the features, the design intent, the dimensions that went into creating that component have been lost. Any attempt to modify these parts usually requires a redesign or some brand new features to be placed onto that component. With flexible modeling, you can simply edit the design as you wish and place brand new design intent into this dumb solid. While we're on the subject of design intent, flexible modeling can be used to change the design intent of a model. So design intent simply means the, the relationships and the references that we build into our parts to affect how they behave when they're modified. For instance, if we make two bosses equal diameter, modifying one of them, the other one simply updates to match. Now, as a design progresses through its life cycle, you may want to change that design intent. This would usually require you to go back into the parts history and unstitch all of that intelligence that you've built into the model. With flexible modeling, we can simply edit the design intent, repurpose our designs, and make those differences and those changes to the way we expect the part to behave very quickly and at the end, or very close to the end, of the part's life cycle. Changing a design very late in the day can often be expensive and time consuming. Flexible modeling gives individuals the capability to make these changes, whether they're large or small, and they can make them at any stage of the design process. Again, protecting the history that's already in place, all of the features and the dimensions that go towards creating this model. And finally, flexible modeling makes it incredibly easy for users to de-feature a product. So removing things which you may not want in an analysis, such as fillet rads or holes, for instance, it can be done extremely quickly with the tools that you have inside the flexible modeling package. So let's take a look at the product in action. We're going to open up into a Creo Parametric Assembly. And I'm going to do a few things in here. I'm going to work with a part that already has history. But to begin with, I'm going to import a part from another CAD system. In this case, it's going to be SolidWorks. And we're going to open up that part directly into the assembly and just assemble it into place. What I'm then going to do is open up the flexible modeling tools and start to make changes to this model that I've brought in from SolidWorks. We also have translators for things like Inventor, Step, and IGES, and so on. So now I've opened up this product on its own, we can see that there is no history at all. So all of the design intent that was originally in this product has been lost. I'm going to make a few changes. So the boss on the end of this component, I may need to extend. By going into the flexible modeling application, I can select a surface and then select the geometry as opposed to a feature. I have choices on how I control this geometry, either by moving, or in this instance, I can create my own dimension to drive the location of that geometry. I can be very specific about where I want to drive this geometry from, so I've selected the rear surface there, affect the dimension, and then now control the geometry. Things like radiuses or diameters on components I can change. And if you take a look there, you can see how it's affecting those connected fillet rads. I don't need to tell it to maintain tangency to those. Flexible modeling will do that automatically. For things like editing rounds, you simply pick the surface and make your changes as you would with Creo, either by dragging or by changing the dimension itself. If we come to the other end, we can see that there's a fillet rad here that maybe I need to remove that isn't in the design anymore. So simply by selecting this surface, I can tell it that I'm selecting the round and then hit the remove icon. Crucially, it heals the geometry underneath 
where the round used to be. So you don't see a seam or a crack in those surfaces. If I do that on something a little bit larger like this groove and I hit the remove button, you can see that it heals that surface after that's been removed. If I pick up another surface on here, I can use that modify analytic tool to again change the radius of this geometry. So rather than using features, I'm now doing more direct edits on these parts. I'm going to use the move controller here to start to drive the boss on the rear of this component. Again, picking up just the boss itself. And instead of using the dragger, I'd like to change the origin point of where my move is going to start from and then use it with a dimension. All of these dimensions that I'm producing are available to edit again and again. So as we look in the history tree, we're kind of building a pseudo history of the movements and the changes that I've made to this part. These also can be exposed on a drawing and are in effect parametric. They will now drive the designs for me. This is fantastic because it means that I can control the areas that I'm actually concerned with instead of trying to recognize features that I'm never going to use and never going to change. So we've seen how to edit a part that has no history. Let's take a look at this component, which has quite a lot of history, uh, quite a few features in there, and also some, some quite tricky design intent. Perhaps it's not quite the same as it was when I originally created this component. You know, over the years, we've modified it many times, and perhaps some of those references and relations that we originally had don't really work anymore. So for instance, if I'd like to change one of these bosses and make a separate edit to it to perhaps move it away and change its location, I'm going to start using the flexible modeling application to very quickly select the geometry I'm interested in. So rather than picking an extrude feature, I'm picking the whole boss or the whole cut on the inside. And as I start to move this around, just look at those fillet rads, change and adapt to where they're placed on the object. It's an incredibly powerful way of making these edits to my design. We can also do things like that, where we rock it over on its axis. I mean, how would you do that today? You'd have to go back and completely redesign that feature. Flexible modeling gives us this capability to make these dramatic changes, but the crucial thing is that we can hold and maintain the history of these parts. So as I go back and I edit the diameter of those bosses, you can see how that intelligence still remains even after doing those quite dramatic edits to my component. Although flexible modeling is predominantly used as a tool to edit your designs, you can also use it to copy and duplicate existing features from your product. So we can see this quite complicated boss on the side that has many features associated to it. I can select them very quickly, keep the original, and then start using those intuitive dragging tools with driving dimensions to reposition my duplicate feature. Again, notice how those fillet rads will update and intelligently build themselves back onto the model. These type of edits offer huge productivity gains for users, as rather than searching for individual features and patterning those, we can simply grab all of the geometry we require and create these duplicates. I'm now going to make a few edits to the underside of this part. So to begin with, I'm going to select the fillet on the bottom here and just edit it. Although I have that feature somewhere else in my history tree, um, I, I don't really want to go around hunting for it. It may be connected to other features. So I'm going to add this at the end of the design process just to make this design change. Secondly, I'm now going to affect the wall thickness of this, uh, this cut on the inside of the part. So the first thing is to make sure that I'm dimensioning it from the base of the product. And now as I start dragging this internal surface, just look how it behaves with the fillets going around all those other features. It's incredibly powerful. So when making edits to a model such as this, the user has three main options to either move with the dragger, move with dimension, or to actually break the object off and reattach it to the model like you would when you're using assemblies. In this instance, I'm actually going to duplicate but not attach the geometry. So much the same way we did that boss before, this time I'm going to reposition and relocate the, the surface geometry to a totally new position on my model and leave it floating there. I can then edit this even further or once it's in its new position, simply select the geometry and reattach it. This will then automatically push itself back into the model and also make itself into a solid object. Again, hugely powerful. Because we've only modified the geometry that's there and not recreated it, by hitting the regenerate button, we can see that all the associations that existed inside the assembly are still intact. Those surfaces still remain. And that's, again, another major benefit of using flexible modeling. We don't just 
protect the history that exists inside components, but we don't destroy anything that's already there as well. So those relationships remain. For this next part of the demonstration, we're going to focus on repurposing design intent. So if we take a look at this component, we can see that there are perhaps a number of features in there that if we had the chance to do them again, we maybe do them differently. Uh, in this case, we have a number of holes which have been done in a single extrude operation when actually a pattern probably would have been better. Unfortunately, we have a load of other features that rely on that uh, extrusion to exist. So instead, what we're going to do is recognize the geometry perhaps in just one of these cuts. So again, using the intuitive selection techniques, we can pick that up very, very quickly and then ask it to recognize any other geometry on this component that looks the same. Now it's recognized this geometry as a pattern. By returning back to the assembly, we can use that pattern as a reference to perhaps place a bolt in each one of those locations. So that was finding patterns within parts that, that do have history. Let's have a look at creating it with one that doesn't. So we're going to take a look at this object, which is one that is a, uh, a step file. Uh, we can see that there's zero history in there, but many elements on the design that could be recognized as a pattern. So by going into flexible modeling, we can select a portion of that geometry and have a look at what we can find that relates to it. So things like fillets or maybe the cut itself. Once we've found that cut, we go to the pattern recognition. You can see it's found all 12 of those there. But we can also start to affect that pattern so we can edit it maybe down to six. We can change the, uh, the angle between them to 60. And once we've processed that, we've actually removed the offending geometry that we didn't require. Once that pattern exists, we can do more with it. We can perhaps find the fillet rads on the existing feature or the original feature, make a change to that, and then propagate that information to the rest of the pattern. This type of intelligence that we can build into our models could add massive productivity gains to the user. Other methods that we could do is perhaps add things like uh, symmetry and recognize where there's mirrored objects or mirrored features. In this instance, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to recognize a pattern, but actually remove some of these elements from the pattern. Once I've done that and I've recognized the components that I do want to be associated, by making a change to the original feature, in this instance, I'm going to change the diameter of the inside face, I can propagate that information to the rest of the pattern and leaving out the ones that I didn't select before. So as you can see, flexible modeling inside Creo Parametric offers users a unique capability when it comes to editing their designs. Whether those designs have large amounts of history or no history at all, you simply select the geometry that you wish to make an edit to, make your changes, safe in the knowledge that if there is history, it's protected, and if there's no history, then you can start to build your own unique dimensions that you can use over and over again. If you have any further questions relating to this product or any other product offered by PTC, please contact Root Solutions on the information shown. Thank you very much for watching.